I'm Gaz Lloyd, expedition leader and survival instructor. I've stranded myself in the Costa Rican rainforest for seven days with only a machete and a water bottle to put my skills to the test. In the jungle, it's a different ball game. There's just so much humidity in the air. Oh my God, that tastes good. This doesn't feel from The worst sting I'd ever had. Ah. Idiot. Not really experienced anything like it. So I'm um, not even 200 meters from leaving the road, just on the main trail, and come across this rubber tree which the roots go across the path and so everybody's boots scuff them so where, whereas normally you would score the tree with your machete let the latex drip out let it dry for a couple of days and then have rubber i've managed to harvest all of this in less than five minutes Just found this dry stick in the river. Um, I don't know for sure what tree it's from, but breaking into it just to check the uh, the hardness, and I reckon we might have some luck using it for a bow drill. Um, so I'll hold on to it and see what luck we have later. Come across this uh, dead fallen termite mound on the ground. So there's no termites in it, no good for food. But what I can do is burn this over the fire and it will create quite a, a thick smoke that acts like a natural insect repellent. And given how bad the mosquitoes have been already, I think I'm gonna take this with me. Just walking through all of this fallen tree and tangled logs, reminding myself, just be careful in case of any snakes. And lo and behold, a very pretty little eyelash pit viper. I'll hang in wait. So I've arrived at uh, the intended camp spot. It's not too hard to see why I've chosen this place. But just to talk you through the, the decision making behind it. Um, so we've got a big open space in the canopy, which means we've got a nice sunny spot, which is great for drying materials. So they're all drying out already. And good for just lifting your spirits in the jungle to be able to get some sun sometimes. Um, can get quite close in the canopy. I've got ready access to running water, so that's one of my survival priorities ticks off very easily. And I have my very own jungle jacuzzi. And washing is one of the biggest morale boosters for me when you're out in the wild and grubby and filthy, so that was high on my list. This is the spot I've chosen to build a shelter, so it's near to the rapids just down there but far enough away that the sound of the water is just a gentle trickle and i've got two strong trees which i'll be able to build my shelter around and a flat rock there so i'll i'll put a mud base for my fire so i don't damage the rock and then i can put some cross beams from the trees down towards the bank to build my roof. One of the rules that I've set myself for this challenge is to uh, have minimal impact on the environment. Um, I think a lot of people have this 
presumption about the rainforest that it's all hacking and slashing and not really having any thought to how they're damaging the environment. Um, so we're two weeks after a survival challenge that I hosted for a group where they all had to build shelters without cutting anything live down and they had a, a leaf limit that they were allowed to use to reduce the number of leaves that they would take from some of the plants and farms. Uh, so my plan is to revisit the sites that they used, which they dismantled and left no trace, but the materials should still be there kicking around and reasonably good. It uh, shouldn't have rotted yet after only two weeks. So my intention is to go and regather all of those materials, which are about half a kilometre away, and I'll intend to build my shelter purely from the materials that I've repurposed from there so I don't have to take anything fresh from the forest. So here we have some of the uh, previously used materials, firewood, some leaves. So I'll be gathering all of those to take back down. taking a bullet ant to the calf and uh, I think I've got away with it but the last time I felt that it was the worst sting I'd ever had so we'll see how it develops. So this fairy stemmed plant with the leaves growing around in a spiral is uh, it's known as sour cane or bitter cane. So I just take off the fairy outside and then chew and suck. Well, <clears throat> it's taken a couple of hours and a lot more calories than if I just cut down everything conveniently around me. But I've got a big stack of wood, straight poles there, and then tons of leaves that I can use. So I should have everything I need except maybe some vines to build the shelter. made this um, mud clay base for the fire just to protect the rock underneath and then it's got a little raised lip so any embers should roll back in rather than rolling off onto the rock into the water. The basics of the shelter are done. <coughs> um, that was kind of my number one today given that a new water would be easy. Um, I'll try and get a fire going tonight as well, um, but don't feel hungry yet, no need to start looking for food. What I would like is a bed though, rather than uh, sleeping on the rock and bare earth. So I'll try and squeeze out a quick bed and then crack on making some fire. So uh, just as I'm finishing up, I've got a swarm of army ants coming through the shelter. I didn't see any uh, ant nests where I chose, but they were obviously marching through somewhere. Um, on the plus side, they've cleared out all of the uh, potential nasties, including a um, fairly big wandering spider and a really mean looking scorpion. So, thanks ants. Right then, 
Shelter's built. <clears throat> We've got running water, got a bed. Not thinking about food yet, but what I would like to get is fire tonight. Um, so I'm going to make a bow drill set with the wood that I picked up earlier. Um, I actually found a different piece that seems better. to make another set out of a different piece of wood. Hate to say it, but this doesn't feel promising. different wood I think. Bow drill set number two. Yes. Okay. We have a working set. Which means we've got fire tonight. It's too dark to uh, see me but 6 p.m. end of day one had three attempts at fire and it's getting too dark to see what's not working so I think I'm gonna knock it on the head have a little wash while it's light enough to still see what I'm doing there and then I guess turn in for a cold dark night Morning, day two, um, really awful night's sleep, turns out without the distraction of stuff to do, the bullet ant sting from earlier was pretty painful, um, the palm sheaths that I'd used as a mattress were still pretty soaking wet, so cold dark and wet night with not much sleep. Um, so this morning the priority is get a fire going. How's that for a start to the day? Seven, eight attempts, bad tinder, bad uh, wood for the bow drill. Finally, fire. Mm. Well, not loaded with calories, but first thing I've actually eaten in 24 hours. And it tastes really good. Mm. If 
found a um, freshly cut young palm out on the trail. So I've added a bit more thatching to the roof and presumably, like most palms, you can eat the heart of this. So that'll give me a bit of carbohydrate. Stripped off the outer casing. And let's see how it is. Pretty tasty. Not a lot of food. So I've been drying out the uh, palm sheets that I had as my mattress in the sun and they kept sliding off the bed in the night so what I'm going to try and do is split them all down into thinner strips and then weave them into a mat to see if it all stays in place. The next objective is food um, and I'm pretty hopeful I'll be able to get some crayfish out of the deeper pools just outside the shelter. Um, what I normally do is catch them with my hand using the head torch and you get the eyes reflecting but I haven't got a head torch with me so what I'm going to do is split down a stick, I'm going to stuff bits of rubber that I found earlier into here with some dry twigs and then I'm going to lash it all together with um, this stuff which is the outside of the vine that I stripped down to lash my bed together so it's green and moist so it shouldn't burn too quick um, and hopefully that will give me a good strong flame and then I'll be able to light up the eyes and then what I'll probably have to do is make a spear as well because I think it could be a, a little bit hard trying to catch them with a flaming torch in one hand. So you can see of alternated rubber and bundles of sticks and then I'm just going to lash that all with the, uh, with the vine and hopefully that will work pretty well. By no means pretty but we'll see how it works. So I've used a similar design for the spear with the splayed top and then I've just used some sticks to widen the gaps and then lashed it with a vine so it doesn't split any further and the uh, the principle is that by having them spread out it gives you more surface area to have a chance of hitting something Chaco toothpaste. So I've just used the flat edge of my machete to bash down the end of the stick, break up all the fibres and then I can use it as a toothbrush.
started and it's just started raining so it will put the thatch to the test not a lot I can do about it at the moment if it is leaking so fingers crossed I think it's pretty solid though uh, not a bad night's sleep um, amazing the difference the fire makes and a more comfortable bed but the rain did leak through in a few places um, all along my bed which was pretty annoying so that kept me awake for a while um, other than that, I say it's doing pretty well. The fire stayed dry, so that's the main thing. I've put a ring of rocks around this morning because I kept losing firewood into the river overnight, it kept rolling out. So um, these are all rocks from the river, so I'm just going to keep a really gentle fire going all day to try and dry them out a bit and hopefully that will prevent any explosions and shards of rock in the night. Glad I left myself this for today. So the uh, the fruit aren't actually particularly easy to spot while camouflaged, but the flower really stands out and draws your attention to the vine but I'm not seeing any more than just this one and the one I had yesterday mm. oh my god that tastes good Nothing like a bit of starvation to uh, make you appreciate simple things. Amazing. So, uh, I guess the farmers dropped these or decided they didn't want them and then they pack them up, I guess so nobody else can take the bunch, but there's a few good ones in there. They're not big, but uh, anyone that knows me well, or even just knows me a little bit, would know I would live on bananas, and uh, really, really happy with them. When they're green like this, they're, they're packed full of starchy carbohydrates, kind of like a potato, so should give me some good energy, just need to rush them over the fire. This day just gets better and better. I, uh, I made myself the rule that I wouldn't um, raid any of the farmer's lands that are in the area. But when a banana tree falls down under its own weight into the river, I'd say they're fair game. Got a few more flowers, but no fruit that I can see. So these little sprouts from the Hiliconia, I can eat these. It tastes a bit like watermelon, jungle candy. Again, not much nutritional value, but nice little snack. If a little bit manky. Jackpot. Some ripe bananas at the top of this bunch which have all started falling and getting eaten by the bats so mm. wow super creamy mm. oh my god I love bananas wow my bag is full of green bananas, which should keep me going for the next few days. I'll tell you what, I feel amazing for having had those little bananas. I think uh, 
you know, I, I felt pretty okay for not having eaten anything for the past couple of days beside those two little passion fruits. Um, perhaps a little bit sluggish, but yeah, just <laughs> having eaten them, I can feel the, the sugar hit. Um, it's, oh, it's weird, I've not, not really experienced anything like it. It's like my, my brain's sharpened up, my senses have sharpened up, I feel enthused and happy and crazy the impact it has and we're, we're desensitized to all of this because we just have this ready stream of calories, sugar, fat, all just coming in, never like stop to appreciate it or give ourselves a chance to feel the hunger and really want it. Yeah, it's amazing. And I've got a whole bag full of them. Here we are, back at camp. After two and a half hours excursion, fire's still just about going. Just like a potato. Mm. Be lovely with some salt though. Game changer. Just been to the loo for the first time which I guess given that I hadn't eaten there wasn't anything to go to the loo with. Um, I'll spare you the details but banana leaves make very very luxurious toilet paper and biodegradable. So it rained last night and highlighted all the leaks in my roof um, so whereas I'd intended to try and just use the materials that had been left behind by the group um, I think I'm going to need to patch up a few of the holes because I've got another four nights yet and I don't really want to be suffering from the uh, experience of water torture all night. So I'm just going to show you how to sustainably harvest the leaves from her palm. So the indigenous know this is rooster tail. It has a rooster tail. Um, they use it for their thatching so it's an important plant for them and they look after them. Um, what we want is to be able to take a few without harming the plant. Um, all of this stuff up in the heart is what the, the palm is using. It's bright green, full of chlorophyll. Um, so the, the plant's getting all of its energy from these leaves. But down here, the dead ones, it's not using anymore. So we can take as many of those as we want from as many different trees and it's not going to harm the tree. Uh, also if we want to take some of the green ones, as long as we take the lowest ones from here, they'll be the next ones to die off. So we can leave a healthy crown and the half of the tree intact and then it will be able to keep growing and replenish the leaf supply without killing the plant. I'm only going to take three from this tree and then I'll move on to a different one so I'm not causing too much damage to just one plant.
one of the more ripe bananas had a split in it, so I don't think I can keep it because the ants or the bats will probably come for it. But I thought I'd roast that one and have a nice little sweet caramelly treat. So I'll let you know how it is. Like banana caramel. carbohydrates and the fact that I know I'm going to be confined to my shelter for the next 12 hours in about 40 minutes making me feel very restless. <laughs> day. Got shelter and hopefully the roof doesn't leak anymore. I've got a comfortable bed, I've got a fire, I've got firewood, I've got all the water I need, I'm well hydrated and now I've got food sorted as well and food in my belly. Feeling good. So yeah, happy that I've got all of the survival priorities ticked off. That's um Let's see how far I can push it for the next three days. Reusing last night's torch as a, uh, a light to see my way to go for a wee. Much better than using my watch light, which is what I've been doing for the previous night. Don't know if you can hear the rain, but it's raining pretty heavily. Worse than last night. Uh, glad I did my roof repairs, although there still seem to be quite a few leaks, but I'd say it's, it's less bad than it was last night, and the rain's heavier, so I guess that's a win, but no chance of sleeping at the moment, just getting drips on constantly. Fire's doing well though. rain's letting up so I'm just trying to dry my bed out by the fire. Good morning. Day four after a really horrendous night's sleep. Um, the, the rain got really heavy and was just dripping constantly onto the bed. So that got soaked, I got soaked. I had to stay up for probably about another hour trying to dry everything out after the rain had stopped. Um, I also managed at some point to knock over one of my bed posts which in the dark I couldn't couldn't find it again so one corner was just free floating which meant it was a bit lopsided so when I tried to go back to sleep I just felt kind of seasick and off, off kilter so that was weird. Not feeling as chipper as I did when I went to sleep. Bananas for breakfast though. Looks like I gathered the firewood just in time. Here we go again.
better in here than it is out there. So even if the shelter does leak, it's better than that. So uh, I want to have a go at making banana flour with the green bananas. Um, I've never tried this. I don't fully know how they do it, but I'm going to have a go and see what I end up with. I've got this round rock out of the river, and then there's this one sitting in the river here. It's got a nice divot in it, and then the round one can roll in there and use it as a grinder on the banana to break it down. Okay, giving it a quick wash first. Doesn't smell bad, so we we'll assume that means clean. And there we go, a little banana bread though. So I'm going to try roasting this over the fire, make a little ash cake, see how it tastes. And there you have it, one banana cookie. Not bad. Loses the um, potato, potatoiness. Nice for a different texture there. So after the banana flower success, I was going to make some more. My grinding stones are currently underwater, but at least they're getting a good wash. So the river is still rising, um, and it's getting nerve-wrackingly close to the support post for my roof. Safe as houses.
back in business. Right then, same principle as last time, but I'm gonna do three bananas this time. And instead of the little bit of water I added to give it some moisture again, I'm gonna mash up this little ripe banana, mash it all together and make banana bread. Waste of four bananas, I'd say. <laughs> Save banana bread for lockdowns. Crazy the highs and lows you go through. Yesterday I was on top of the world, all because I had a couple of bananas. <laughs> and I was feeling like I'd potentially even do an extra day just because I've got the food, so why not? Then today, Obviously it was a wet start and a rubbish night's sleep, so I didn't feel so good then. But nice just sitting by the fire, seeing my shelter was working and keeping most of the rain off, enjoying a, a roasted banana. And then made the banana flour and that worked and that was cool. Making the banana bread and it not working, it was such a knockback for something so trivial, just a gimmicky, a thing to experiment with but instead it, it's just left me feeling like I oh, will what am I going to do for the next two days then not that I was going to spend them making banana bread anyway but it's an odd sensation and I'm sure I'll come to another high moment as soon as I have a ripe banana or have another win but an interesting component to this roller coaster round two crayfish attempt not particularly hopeful given how cloudy the water is but I was awake most of last night with the strongest protein craving um, in particular for some pineapple barbecue pork ribs from a restaurant in the Philippines where they just melt off the bone and are the size of I don't know, looks like they've come off a brontosaurus or something We're approaching that restless hour before bed when I don't know what to do with myself. I just need to burn off the excess steam. Finding these bananas was a curse. To anyone thinking that the jungle is warm at night, it's really not. I'm so cold. It's a cold breeze just blowing through and burning through all of my firewood, trying to keep it hot enough whilst maintaining delicate balance and not making it too big and burning down my roof. Good morning, day five, um, yet another sleepless night. This time just because it was too cold, I guess. The previous two nights I've been more focused on the fact it was raining to notice that it was also cold. And the first night I had no fire, so of course it was cold. Um, quite surprised. Normally when I've slept out in the jungle with a fire, that's been plenty, but 
where I am I'm just getting a cold breeze blowing down over the slope. I've been thinking about how I can adapt the shelter. Um, it's kind of born from thoughts of what I would do differently next time. And I concluded I'd probably build a lean-to so that one side's completely sealed in against the ground so you're not getting any breeze in there and then it rebounds the heat from the fire um, back towards the shelter, into the shelter. Um, and then I was looking at this and thinking I've got these central posts which I could pivot the whole roof on and then it would be back against the ground and would become a lean-to but the problem with that is the thatch is then running the wrong way but the roof leaks anyway so maybe it wouldn't be any worse um, I'm also quite fond of my little porch so what I think I'm going to try and do is take the back pole and move it in here to double up the central pole and then cut these support beams should in theory then fold the roof in two and create an apex and then I keep my porch and I get a lean to down to the slope. Let's see. shelter 2.0 um, doesn't have as much runoff as I would like and I'm really not confident about the direction of the thatch now but if it stays dry it should definitely serve to keep me warmer at least so we'll see how the weather holds see how much the water level came up yesterday it was lapping the bottom of the post right there a lot of rain so last night's cold weather really depleted my firewood stores I'm gonna try and collect enough wood today that I won't need to collect anything tomorrow and I can just have a super chill day for the final day that said the uh, low calories and pure banana diet I'm starting to feel a little wiped out.
of uh, just come to spend a bit of time with this tree, which is really magnificent. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. It's only 50 meters from my camp and its roots. They, uh, they go all the way over to just behind my shelter, but you can't see one from the other because the, well, you can see, you can't see my shelter because um, the undergrowth is so thick. Foolishly, I thought, oh, I'm only nipping over there. I'll wear shorts. And then I brushed against the leaf, which seemed really irritant. I thought to myself, that's not an irritant plant. My whole thatch is made of those. And I looked underneath and there was this little gem of a caterpillar. So the reason we're here, what's so special about this tree? Um, other than the fact that it's huge. So it's called a sabre. Uh, you might know it as Kapok. And it's sacred in a lot of cultures. Um, the Mayans believed that it represented the universe and the Bribri, the local indigenous population in this area. Uh, for them, it represents the ocean. But this one is most special to me because I've actually climbed this with a couple of good friends. Um, it's about 40 meters, 50 meters up into the canopy. And you can see everything that's going on up in the treetops. Climbed using ropes, obviously, not just uh, climbing up the vine like Tarzan. And if those aren't enough points of interest, it's just spectacular. Feels very silent and wise, encourages you to slow down. It's amazing how precious you become of things. This was just a stick that I picked up to cook my first banana and it's cooked every banana since. It's got a little forked end for handling them on the fire and then a shaved tip to help peel them when they're hot and it can get down underneath the skin easily. And then this was just a a flap of the weave from my bed so I just snapped it off and used it as a little banana dish and again I've served all my bananas on it since and I keep them on my banana shelf I look after them I'm sorely tempted to take them away as a souvenir from this experience <laughs> just crazy the, um, the sentimentality that we attach to things that are just any other stick. Just um, sitting there thinking to myself that besides the, the hard graft of rebuilding the roof and chopping loads of firewood this morning, today's been super chilled and tomorrow's set to be the same without the hard graft. And so it's almost just become like a uncomfortable slightly malnourished camping trip which is weird but nice at the same time I'm not the most emotive person as you probably picked up from my monotone monologue throughout this but I feel like I've I've experienced depths and highs to positive and negative emotions that I don't normally get day to day, which has been eye-opening, interesting.
crazy how quick you um, slip back into taking things for granted. I think yesterday, every banana I had, I still I felt so grateful for having found it and tasted amazing. I could feel all of the energy flooding through me. Whereas today, I don't think I've had that sensation in the same way with any of them. I just know that I've got bananas on tap and I can eat as many as I want each day pretty much. Um, I've got more than I'm going to get through most likely so there's no need to ration them overly. Be interested to, uh, to add up how many I eat in each day and uh, work out the calorie intake but I feel fine. Pretty, pretty good energy levels. Um, Mine is functioning well. Bowel movements are normal. Um, good old banana. Morning, day six. What a transformation. <laughs> so much better. Actually slept. Uh, way warmer, having the closed in back and I've still got tons of firewood for tomorrow or tonight. Um, so yeah, happy, feeling good. Um, looking forward to a nice day. So for those of you wondering about the safety side of things, um, <clears throat> I make a half hour round trip up the hill to a clearing each day to get a phone signal so I can just send a quick check in saying all's good and if they've not heard from me then there's three people in the nearby town who will uh, come looking for me and hopefully find me and rescue me but not necessary so far and touch wood it won't be I'll admit the um, the first couple of days where I hadn't eaten anything I was questioning how easily I'd be able to make this journey towards the end of the week if the food situation didn't improve so, <clears throat> I think I said at the beginning I was doing this with just a machete and a water bottle. So I thought I'd talk you through the rest of the things that I've got with me, just in case you're wondering what's in the backpack if all I've got is a machete and a water bottle. So it was important for me to be able to document the experience. So I've got a journal and pen, and obviously the camera which I'm filming this with emergency head torch and then spare camera batteries charger and power bank a pair of shorts um, I just brought these for any moments where I might be feeling more primal and if I wanted to be naked but still filming it's easier to not have to try and blur anything out or um, find well positioned leaves so just a pair of shorts for modesty a uh, paracord bracelet which I quite often wear just because it's useful um, so on the basis that I'd probably be wearing it in the jungle if I was stranded here uh, it didn't feel like cheating to have it um, it's about a metre, two metres um, I also use it to play with stray cats which is quite fun an emergency medical kit which it's effectively just uh, enough stuff to patch me up and get me out um, if I need to self e back for some reason. So I've got tape, plasters, some bandages, um, an emergency Snickers in case I was low on calories and didn't have the energy to walk out. Um, and then for more severe things, a tourniquet, a Sam splint and a hemorrhage dressing. 
and then that's some uh, more tape. Uh, some cash, just in case of an emergency, and for my bus fare home. Machete, water bottle, dry bag, and then backpack to carry it all in. And that's it. And the clothes on my back. So I was thinking about, um, back to what I said yesterday, about how quickly we revert back to taking things for granted and the previous two days starting to lose count now um, every banana I ate I was yeah I was getting this huge buzz and felt felt so appreciative of it um, and it made me feel bad for the bananas because uh, they've really transformed this whole experience it's meant that I've not needed to stress about food or even really worry about looking for it um, still keen for some protein but I'm out tomorrow so I can wait um, and I feel fantastic uh, you know I'm well energized I've got great um, mental clarity I have to pause and think about that <laughs> maybe not but that first um, little ripe banana that I ate after two days I still can't get over that sensation it was like I'd like Gareth had eaten a banana and become banana man um, I just felt so energized and like I'd, I'd got this superpower um, it's incredible I haven't really had the uh, the luxury of just chilling in my bed during the day yet and now that I am I'm looking at the tree that I've built my shelter against and it's covered in scratch marks from what looks like a, a cat sharpening its claws. So, I was so busy chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, that I've neglected my fire. It's totally gone. No embers, nothing. So, back to square one.
I'll tell you what, it's reassuring to have that going again. But I would say I uh, I pride myself on being pretty good at bow drill. Um, very consistent, don't normally struggle to get an ember. Um, but in the jungle, it's a different ball game getting it to flame. There's just so much humidity in the air. The, uh, the tinder that I'd collected as backup and dried out um, just kept putting out the ember and so I kept losing it. So what I did in the end was laid a, a bed of the tinder in the, the hearth where all the ash was still warm even if there wasn't embers in there. So that dried it out and then inserted my ember into that on the ember pan as a platform so it wouldn't fall through and then folded the dry grass in on top and that seemed to work but god I've had to work for it <laughs> yeah not as energetic as I thought I was that's really depleted me after three or four attempts so my final day is drawing to a close got another hour and a half of daylight I think and um, so I'm just sort of starting to wind down make preparations for the evening um, and just reflecting on the whole experience really uh, I'm really happy with what I've achieved um, you know I'd set out with this in mind as purely a, a survival challenge and trying to meet those key four survival priorities, um, water, fire, shelter and food and had comfortably covered that by day three. So then beyond that was just enjoying the experience, um, getting myself into such a, a fit state and a good headspace um, and a good energy level that I was really able to um, go beyond the baseline priorities for our existence and really enjoy myself uh, you know seek seek pleasure in the things I was doing and burn up extra steam doing exercise engage in some mindful activities um, so yeah I'm, I'm really happy on that perspective um, would have liked more sleep but somehow I do not feel like I need it. Um, I've probably had a maximum of 16 hours over the last six days and most of those were all last night but feeling great. Um, I think one thing I'm a little disappointed by is that I didn't manage to get any crayfish. I was really hoping that I would with the uh, with the flaming torch and the spear. Um, that would have been a, a cool one to have achieved. Um, and I can't believe there are no crayfish in any of these pools but not that I could see with the torch and um, I tried in daylight as well and still couldn't see any so it's been an awesome experience really really cool I'll tell you what I'm gonna miss my little riverside shack I've become very fond of it it's uh, definitely feels like home I went for a walk yesterday afternoon and everywhere felt lonely um, and unknown but coming back here just felt felt like coming back home safe and secure and big boy to end on And that's it, day seven, final night done. Um, didn't realize how many mosquito bites I had, but became aware of all of them last night. Just awake itching for most of the night. Nothing left to do, but the ceremonial burning of my bow drill and breaking down the, uh, the shelter. Um, 
I think there's a there's a strong part of me that would love to leave it up as a little little legacy, and I think it's something we all have this need to leave our mark. Um, but something that I admire about bushcraft practice is the leave no trace ethos, um, and I think it's it's a nice point to to end on a little food for thought as to where we would be as a species if we made more effort to make our footprints invisible. I think there would certainly be less restrictions on wild camping and I'm sure the planet would be in a much better state. Food for thought. this and want to see more then hit like subscribe and leave a comment down below you can also follow me on instagram at gazventure thanks for watching